You're listening to the New Old Heads podcast, shot live every Tuesday at twitch.tv slash new old heads and released every Thursday at noon via bringingdowntheband.com. The show is brought to you by Coleman Dental, Print Infinity, Indie CD and Vinyl. Support the show directly by becoming a member at patreon.com slash new old heads. You are now tuned into the New Old Heads podcast. I am Major Seven. The crew is in the building. My man Jay Moore. How are you, sir? Uh, doing well, doing well. Just uh, trying to maintain, you know, and yeah. uh, keep keep the money going and keep uh, keep things peaceful and light. Sound real balanced and centered. You know, that's, that's what you got to be, man. Yeah, I like that. I like that. My man, Longevity, how are you, buddy? <laughs> doing all right. That sounded kind of... Don't, don't do that. How, how are you, you buddy? How are you, that. buddy, buddy? I'm doing all right. Doing pretty good. aggressive. Doing all right, man. Everything good, your way? Yeah, everything's good. Yeah, actually, yeah, I do have some good news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. I'll share it with you guys later. But yeah, we like good news. Yeah, lyrics matter. I see you. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, DJ J did. What's happening, man? Salutations. Jersey's fire, my guy. Thank That's you. Go ahead and put it out in the atmosphere. Yeah. So yeah, see what you're doing there. Indianapolis Clowns, one of the original uh, Negro League teams. I heard they had a Negro ABCs. League uh, flashback game last week um, with some jerseys, retro jerseys and stuff. So yeah, shout the out Indians. to Indians. Yeah, the Indians. So mm-hmm. got one of those too. You got one? Yeah, with my name on the back. Nice. That's pretty cool. I was I ain't gonna say that. That's that's dope, man. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I used to have a, uh, a Negro League jacket. Which one? What team? With the patches on it? With patches on it? Yeah. It had a whole bunch of patches, like uh, all the like teams. The NBA. It was like kind of like green. One, like the one that uh, Rock used to wear on. on uh, Shout out to Charles yeah, S. Yeah, Dutton. Yeah, yeah. He, used, hey, he used to stay laced with Negro League stuff yeah, on the low. Did. He did. Shout, yeah. out, shout out to Rock. A yeah. good show, man. Did you get a chance to watch? I don't. I haven't watched them in years. But did you watch? Anybody watch the BT Awards and enjoy them? You no, know, there are parts that I, some of it. I didn't like this is the thing. I don't watch anything live, especially when I know it'll be on YouTube. I heard the, the production day. was trash, audio issues. Um, That's how it always well, is. Well, they didn't have a, a host. Oh, okay. They like had, Kid, Capri, Kid Capri was pretty much hosting the show for the most part. Usually as MC a DJ? Light does it. As a DJ, yeah. It MC was Light the, was doing the voiceover. The, well, the going to commercial yeah, break yeah. thing like that. But they had Capri, like, he was just on the stage all night, just. I, that's interesting. Yeah, because they were doing the uh, 50th hip hop, 50 years of hip hop anniversary. Mm-hmm. Oh, they okay. just ran through a whole bunch of different segments. So he emceed all of that. I did see and some of the most of the show was a concert for the most part. I see, I see. Yeah. I saw so I saw a lot of videos edited with um, uh, various performances. I know, I think they had a, a lot of OG. I saw Warren G on, and like YG and somebody for that section of the United States and I guess I saw Fat Joe and then I that saw that section of the United States of America of America <laughs> thank you uh, West Coast <laughs> and um, I don't know man I, I didn't get a chance to click on all of them saw a couple saw uh, Red Man getting busy it was a little raggedy a little raggedy yeah a little rough around all the, the new artists you know it's so hard for them to perform now because they have to remember their lyrics well they're not used to performing at a high level uh, Jay Moore so they get by with well, I think they kind of, the thing about it is I think they kind of are you think because they are? the ones that are known, that's where they get their bread and butter. I mean, we're not selling records right now. Mm. A lot of them don't even have records out, so they're touring. They're do- getting clubs and uh, festivals and things of that nature. I mean, when's the last time y'all been to a festival? Oh, I wouldn't go if I got yeah, free tickets. Exactly, it's been a while. So a lot of these artists are performing through those circuits. They're not the main artists performing, but they are getting through. I don't know, man. It's just it's. Basically, a whole lot of the stuff we talk about on the show, as far was as... Was it lip syncing, too? Oh, uh, it was a lot of that. A lot, lot of that. Uh, rapping over your vocals and things well, like that. I said the wrong thing. Yeah, rapping over your vocals, yeah. Yeah, but uh, <clears throat> it just wasn't put together very well, in my personal opinion. It was it was okay for what it was. A lot of people was were kind of uh, enthused that it was so... Uh, I won't necessarily say ghetto, but mm. uh, I've because, seen that. Because I've people, seen people say that though. Yeah, I, people like to say that, and, and it's kind of, kind of almost a new way of saying thug, which is an old way of saying. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. so I, I kind of try to stay away from. Yeah, that. Yeah, kind of. You know, try yeah. to stay away from that connotation. But I mean, it just it's not the same as far as artists that we championed at one point in time, and that just makes us sound old. Mm-hmm. But in a sense. Uh, our artists were on the same thing. It just was balanced out because everything wasn't all the same. Everybody wants to be that person like a uh, old girl, uh, brown booty hole, sexy red, <laughs> walked around ah! with just a stack of money out. I saw that. That's so stupid. I'm like why? <laughs> I didn't even see this part. First she had all. bread. Walking around with bread out like this. Yeah, just yeah, a stack of money. Don't you get tired of holding the money? Like. 
Like it must have been her advance or something. It's I don't know. Probably she probably literally thing. walked around with, with that all the all money night. she had yeah. all night. Look, y'all, I'm about to blow all of this. I just got. I'm just going because hold the it. thing is, <laughs> you know, and I and you know what, any of these young people, I I wish the best form, even if I don't like what they're doing artistically, and I don't sure. care for what she's doing artistically. Um, but, you know, hey, the thing is, this might be your biggest moment right now. Yeah. You you know, talking about, you know, uh, singing nasty stuff instead of in front of Dr. Bobby Jones. Did y'all see that video? I yeah, did not. Seen it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Please tell me this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, basically, like, the crowd was singing her song. Um, she performed? You yeah. No, but she was just in the crowd. And, oh, okay. And she like, was performing in the crowd. Yeah, and some other girl in a in a inappropriate dress who was pregnant started uh, twerking alongside her, and like that's for Shine Rock. That's a uh, blue faces baby. Not see, her. I, see, I don't know who these people are. <laughs> Lone, outside. Lone was so hurt. <laughs> and so, but it was it's just funny. Brand. Like the show, like Dr. Bobby Jones sitting there. I was like, yeah, this might be his last BET awards. Dr. Bobby Probably Jones so. ain't coming back for that man. Yeah, he's like, no. I mean, so he he was like, well, I saw Boosie in the crowd. You know, fresh out. He I was there with his attorneys. He was like, hey, smart I'm man. Up anywhere, I'm a, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna have legal representation. <laughs> I did see an uh, IG video somebody posted where he was like, BET, I need three tickets, man. Me and my lawyers is coming. And they then the next there. thing you know, they was there. They was there. Look, man, yeah, I, I know a lot of people do not like Boosie for whatever reason. I love Boosie. But I tell you what, like if I've ever seen something where I've seen it really somebody who is being railroaded and this is a uh, miscarriage of justice and yeah. is being targeted by the federal government and we should never... Uh, be excited for somebody, especially somebody black, to be targeted by the federal government like this. I don't care what you care about what he said about gay people mm -hmm. or the fact that he still uh, uh, listens to R. Kelly. Like, what they're doing to him is wrong. Your cousin still listens to R. Kelly. I don't mean that. Shoot, you know how many, look, a lot, like I said, I, I'm out. I know. I, I sneak around. I see, I hear a lot of you DJs sneaking in R. Kelly songs back in. On the low. No, it can't be on the low. I, I ain't going to lie to you. I didn't, I didn't ran one here and there. <laughs> You know, in the past, how many years? I'm to bring shame back, Terry. <laughs> shame me, shame me, blown. Shame and you me. know what? I, and I, I want, I want to say this, and I don't want to be scrutinized. You probably will. I feel We're like scrutinized every listen, week. Listen, man, I feel like I believe I, I can fly. I should get a pass. I, if, I honestly believe that sometimes you just need to hear that song. Like I'm not even playing. You know, not what? joking. You know what, man? If there was a pass to be given. Because we know that one's it not about crime. It has to be that one. Come on, man. I believe I can It has to be that one. You don't no. feel like if, you, if you're if having a down day and, and you need some uplifting. You just want to fly. That's a good record for it. That's a good, that is, that's that a good song. That's not how it go. That, that's that's not look, I, look, and the thing is, I feel the same way about I Wish. Yeah, see? Certain thing with Some you, things to get a pass. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, if you're missing somebody who's not here. I believe I Can Fly is a great record. I Wish kind of hits a certain way. Yeah, absolutely. Did y'all see the Keith Murray video? <laughs> Yeah. Unfortunately, yes. Did, did we all bad. see that? Down bad. He's getting he's getting some pushback for actually posting the video. Now, some people came out and said that he's wrong for recording Keith Murray. So I'm like, this is not Lord Jamar that's recording this. I saw a TikTok, whatever you want to call it, name of somebody. So right. it wasn't his, right? So and the plus the person that was talking was younger. Fair or foul, man, in terms of him getting backlash for posting this. Ninth Wonder, uh, Doodlebug from Digg Digg Diggable Planets. Sorry, <laughs> mush mouth action. I mean, do doodle, doodle, doodle bug, doodle bug, <laughs> doodle bug, and diggable, diggable, diggable planets. That's a lot. Now I'm mush from the diggable planets. That's too, that's too much doodling going on. OBKB. Uh, and uh, Immortal Technique, they, their comments were more positive, I saw right? Yeah. But there's some people that were like, man, he's foul for posting this. This ain't funny. Reach out to him in person. So what are you guys' thoughts on this in terms of Lord Jamar? Because it sounds like it was coming from a good place. Jay Moore, what you think? I don't know if it was coming from a good place. You, you know? don't think so? Because, it, look, I'll just, I'll just make, if I, if I saw a video. Now, these guys are peers now, coming up exactly. around the same age. If I saw a video, and, and say we weren't doing this podcast anymore, and it's years down the line, whatever. Right. And I see a video of one of the three of you like this, and we haven't spoken in a while for whatever reason. Uh -huh. I'm not going, and if I have your number or at least have your social media contacts, I'm going to be like, hey, man, what's really going on? I, I, what the, 
what was the point in him reposting this to the world? Even if they're, you know, because he he may seem like, you know, they're not the closest of friends. They've had some personal issue. But even if that is the case, if 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 somebody as your peer, somebody, you know, in the rap game that, you know, and you and like I said, it it, does it look like drugs to me? Yeah, it looks like drugs. It does. Right. I've never been drunk and done that. Yeah. Nah. Well, nah. yeah, you know, so well, it, it's of. something else. Agreed, loan. Agreed. So I, I'm just saying, I don't want to say he did it for clout. You know what I'm saying? Lord Jamar is, 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 is you know, for, for, as far as I'm concerned, not by much, but he's an elder. Yeah. You know, maybe he doesn't understand exactly how some of these things look. And maybe he really thought he was doing the right thing. But my first inclination, if it was anybody I knew, mm-hmm. even if we hadn't spoken in a while, we had some, some issue if I could get in contact with some part of your family or I could get in contact with you directly, mm-hmm. I wouldn't put a picture of you like being down bad on my Instagram. Cause what are you, you're inviting the view people eyes onto this who don't know this man and are either going to just feel sorry for him, kick him while he's down or laugh. What about those that would argue? What about those that would argue it's already out? Yeah, it's all. If it's he, already out, then I don't need to repost it. You don't need Fair to amplify enough. it. Fair enough. Don't amplify. I would not amplify something that if I if I have genuine love for somebody, can you even am- if it's on the peripheral? I, I why would I, I? My first thing is like, let me reach out and to his, his people and and, and we got to see what's going on. Can here. you amp? Can you can you truly amplify something that is already viral? Yes, because you if you can amplify, because I don't. That's the how. Pers- that's why I know about it. Yeah, because okay. once again, I'm I would. Just, I'm, I'm just. Throwing it out there. I was asking. I wouldn't know about this. You know, the, I saw the video on Lord, you know, on Lord Jamar's page. That's where I saw it. Okay. So there you go right there. All right. So, if you, you know, so I wouldn't, if anything, you driving traffic to this person who took the video, who doesn't have, who probably doesn't have that same love for Keith Murray, who put this up for clout, who put this up to make fun of him, you know, right. to kick somebody when they're down. He was actually laughing in the video. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, you know. Which I thought was tasteless. That, so that's if you're going to, if you're going to do all that, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I said. Reposting the video is probably the third, fourth, maybe fifth thing that would be on my mind if I saw somebody that even if I just have a little bit of love for him as an artist, maybe not even as a person. Right. The last thing on my mind is reposting this and saying, hey, y'all, he needs help. If he needs help. Reach out to him. Reach out to see if he really needs help or reach out to the people who could potentially help him. What do you think, Long? What what are are your thoughts on uh, the video? I agree. You agree uh, with Jay Moore? Yeah, I agree with Jay Moore. I, and the reason why is because, like, I do content. So I saw this video. Uh-huh. And I was like, I'm not sh- I knew, I know that if I would have shared this video, it would probably be sitting at 50, 60, 70,000, maybe more views right now. I respect that. I didn't do it because it was, it, it was like, nah, that's bad taste. And I don't know Keith Murray. <sighs> you know, I don't know him. But it's just, I don't know. There's just certain lines. And to, to your point, maybe there's a part of... Lord Jamar that thought that he was amplifying this in a way to try to spread a pot. I don't know. What, like, no, he didn't. He's oh, lying. I, I don't know. I, but, but that's I, my I, thing. I don't know what I, I was trying to pull the Instagram video up, but I can't find it. So I, or I don't know what exactly he said in his caption, but I'd be curious to what he said in his caption, because if I knew that, then I could make a better determination. But the I don't, caption was more about we need to get this brother some help. And I'm paraphrasing here, but we need to get this brother some help. Y'all try to, let's try to reach out to him. Let's try to lift him up. Kind of along that line, the way I understood it, the way I read it. It seems performative. He knew that if he posted the video too, more Mm -hmm. people were going to watch it as well. And it's going Mm -hmm. to draw more attention to it, maybe to what he's saying, but you're still drawing attention to it in a negative way. I don't know. To me, it's, it's, it's. We see a lot of this, Mm -hmm. you know, to me, this is no different than people that glorify the, you know, the, the academics thing with Chirac or or the, oh, I see or stuff like that. It's, it's very in a similar mind. It's like stuff that you don't want to see, but you're still pushing the content out there. Let me ask you this. Is this similar to, you mentioned not posting it, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's basically, it's just morally, like you just thought you felt weird about it. You felt wrong about it. Is what he did similar to what they, what people say when I say they, the industry accuse no jumper vlad when they post up is is this do you look at lord yes. jamar the same way in, in this particular scenario right here yes this okay. is very very similar to what no jumper does i don't know about vlad necessarily but oh, if somebody die he gonna post it yeah but uh, i would but, put but, it more but see, like but that's different because it's his content about inter typically when he does that he's yes he's captured 
capitalizing off of the 100%. death. But he's also posting original content, not necessarily about the person dying. He's posting about that person because they are popular in that moment and more people are going to be searching. It's different to me mm. to amplify a specific situation okay. that's happening as opposed to playing the algorithm. Okay. I would compare it to when people uh, take a video of Delonte West when yes. he's sleeping under Very a bridge similar. where you can tell he's clearly Working high. Working at the car wash. Or, yeah. you know, yeah, he's, I remember you know he's clearly down bad and, and it won't even, because, you know, I mean, maybe. That's a good comparison. I, okay, I'll play, I'll play white devil's advocate here and say, you know, because once those videos came out, you know, I remember Mark Cuban reaching out and trying to trying to get some help for Delonte West and yep. get him in rehab, you know, and maybe, maybe just maybe Lord Jamar is thinking something along those lines. It's deep, possible. Deep down in there, you think that might I, be, I, you know, because I, I be want to believe, you know, that Lord Jamar isn't just doing this out of being out of clout chasing and being mean spirited. OK, you know, so maybe maybe that's mm -hmm. where, where he's coming from. But at the same time, I'm just, I, you know, because I can always say what I would do. Sure. You know, like I said, I wouldn't do that to any of y'all or anybody that I know if I saw a video like this and it was somebody I knew if I if I had the wherewithal and the resources to reach out to them. You know, I would do that. And then if I if I had extended resources beyond that, I would see if I could help them. Terry, you sound like you uh you're not going 100 percent, man. No, nah, because first of all, who is he getting to help him by posting this on his social media platform? You know what I'm saying? As a friend, who are you getting to help me going through something by posting it on your social media? All platform? right. So let me let me do Hold devil's on. advocate. Hold okay, on, go nah. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. If that was the case, all you had to do was, I mean, everybody's seen the option where you just put the black screen up and you type something. Yeah. Hey, can everybody say a prayer for such and such? You right. might be, you know what I'm saying? Good you point. might be in Good need point. of some assistance, blah, blah, blah. Reach out to me if you can help so that we can pull together and get something going. Right. Versus that's performative. You know what I'm saying? That's, mm -hmm. that's just trying to show him down bad. And what's crazy is he performed at the BET Awards and didn't miss, miss a beat. That's true. He, That's I mean, he's, but the thing about it is, if he has a problem, a lot of people are functioning addicts or yep. or drunks or alcoholics, you know, things of that nature. I don't know exactly what's going on with him, but I mean, he's been in the news a little bit here lately because the antics he showed when he did that interview not too long ago. Mm -hmm. Right. So everybody knew something was going on. But Keith has been a wild boy. He's been a wild boy, but I mean, there's <coughs> levels to it, though. This is true. That art, the Art of Dialogue series, it definitely was... It was some stuff going on in that where people was like, "Yeah, something's yeah, some, going on." Something's going on. So that's true. That's a good. But point. As far as him showing that that footage, I, I just don't think that was needed. No, I, I okay. mean, yeah. just I like I remember he should have been Murray, offended. I remember Keith Murray performing here. Him. This is years ago. This one close to when I first moved here. I, this how long ago was it? Spin, and I don't. Do y'all mm. even remember that? Yeah, spot? I remember Spin. The last no. I'm yeah. sleeping. Spin yeah, is now lava. It's lava now. It's been yeah. yeah. It's been like three or spin four. Spin was things. a last. I went to the very last spin show mm -hmm. that they had and that was the first time that i went yeah so before the patio i just look i just remember him doing like the same song three times and and then like he took some people on his tour bus or van or whatever he had and it was different you know yeah. like i could tell like he was on one then mm -hmm. yeah you know but at the same time as you age like you being a wild boy, it doesn't come off the same nah. way. Yeah, your problems age with just, you. And yeah, now it just seems beast. like you are, you have a substance abuse problem. Yeah, yeah. Y'all right. Good point, Terry, about the BET Awards because I saw that performance. Him, Red Man, I think, uh, E Sermon. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I saw that. Fan was in the pocket, like he was. He was killing. It. Everything was cool. Uh, I don't know how soon or how recent. The video that posted was. It yeah, we don't been, know when the video was. I don't know what that, you know, I don't know the timeline for that, but it's still the same person, right? Terry talked about functioning. But yeah, man, it's been mixed reviews in terms of how people are looking at, excuse me, Lord Jamar himself posting it. Yeah, help your friends on the low, man. It doesn't need to be public. Yeah. I mean, my father, the one thing my father used to always tell me is everybody don't need to know everything. Nah. He used to say that all the time. So, yeah, and to I, your point, uh, Terry. And even even to like what we're talking about, like I don't think we should center the conversation around Lord Jamar. The conversation it, needs to be around Keith Murray. Well said, Lord. You know what well I mean? Said. Like, sure, maybe it was done out of bad taste, but, you know. At the end of the day, it's about him getting help. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think um, it might have been Ninth who was going more along the lines of what you just said, Lone, about let's focus on, you know, reaching out to his brother to see if we can get him some help. You know, so... 
I don't know. Knife may not have seen it until Lord Jamar posted it. He might be a person that might actually take action on the low based off seeing the post. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's, you know what I'm saying? There's levels to sure. it, the way that we look at it, but on his face value, I, I understand what Terry's saying. I understand what Jay Moore is saying. Actually, all of y'all. There's just I, things that you can do within a realm of taste. Yeah. You know, there's mm-hmm. always ways to get to point from point A to point B faster. Right. You know, but it's just like. Because it's you, about the outcome. It's it, about it, well, in terms of helping him out, that's what it's really about. Yeah, but you know, at the same time, like you, you there's certain things you just don't have to do. Like you, you know, mm-hmm. it's just with everything. But yeah, no, I can dig it. I can yeah, dig. You it. probably never liked him in the first place for him to do him like that, though. I mean, they have some. You know, he alludes that they have some personal issue. He seems. I mean, but Lord Jamar has problems with a lot of people. He does. So. That's true. That's a good point. I hope. I like. I, you know, when I saw it, I was hoping that that's not the case. But everybody is making valid, valid points in terms of, you know, there's always pros and cons. And there's a gray area of things. But everything that y'all have said that you guys are saying is legitimate. And you might, you know what? Legitimate. I, look, you might have just called him at a really bad moment or, yeah. or when a point where like he was high or drunk or what or both. And he was just on one and he woke up the next day and he was sober and he got back to work there was another video of somebody else now again we don't we do not know timelines i can't confirm that but there was another guy that had a tiktok video pulling up to keith murray look what looked like his crib or wherever he was mm-hmm. saying run me my money like keith murray or owed him some money keith murray was in the front yard screaming and yelling saying you know get off my property i'm you know just whatever the conversation was but I'm like, would I have seen that video if the first one didn't come out? No. Like, that's clout. Like, to me, that's even no, worse in it. terms of clout chasing and we, we, pulling up on that man's crib. You know what I'm saying? Like, we know how the internet works. Right. You know, like, there's no, like, pretending around. Like, we, he knew that it was going to get clicks. It's just how the, look, you said, you said it best. That's how the internet works. Like, there's yeah. this dude who played in, like, the high school, like, leagues with LeBron and Carmelo and a cat named Lenny Cook. Yeah. And I watched one Lenny Cook, for whatever reason, he's on this press run right now. Yeah. And he was talking to Cameron and, and Mace. And, like, now, every time I, you know, open my YouTube, something about Lenny Cook comes up. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm not that interested in Lenny Cook. Lenny Cook wasn't, for, <laughs> Lenny Cook wasn't forgotten, but Lenny Cook was not in the in algorithm yeah. prior to, like no. you said, going out with Mace and to your point about you the know, internet working. Yeah, he's on, like I said, he's on some kind of sort of press run now where he, all these people are talking. Might to have him. a book. I don't know. He might have some coming you out. Know, it's a I'm LeBron like, I, movie, right? Uh, yeah, I think I think he's, yeah, there's a LeBron movie on Peacock. But yep. once once again, that's just, I don't know. The Like I said, we're always battling the algorithm. Just yeah. like I do not subscribe to Drink Champs. Right. But because I, it just feels like, oh, whoa. It's going to pop up anyway it's because every, it'll be similar to stuff that you Similar watch. to our podcast. So yeah, I was exactly. like, I, I wish our pod, I hope our podcast sometimes pops up after somebody watches Drink Champs. Yeah. I doubt it. But, but have, you, have y'all seen what Funk Flex posts on his Instagram now? As it relates to this? It's no. nothing musical. As it's a, just like, all clickbait stuff, like Pete Rock type stuff, kind of. Yes, but Pete, kinda, everything that I, he posts. I don't, I don't follow Flex. Like, give me examples Every, uh, type of stuff he posts. So, like, he the stuff might, that's going to go viral. Yeah, type that's thing. it. Yeah. He doesn't post anything that has anything to do. Oh, he's an artist with his profession. Okay, okay. It's just he's just playing the algorithm. Yeah, that's all it is. It's corny, very, mm-hmm. especially in your when you're in a position that you can use it for. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Your yeah. profession, yep, professionally, and like make the, it look right because people so, would follow Flex for posting almost anything about anybody. So there's no videos of him like out in the club spinning, nah. or you know what I'm saying like nah, you know you get the view of the videos. DJ with the crowd and everything. There's none of that. He was slipping and following and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, that's weird for for him being who he is. That's extremely corny for yeah. him being who he is as legendary. For the guy that likes people to call that. a lot of people corny. That's true. Really but, corny, but it, but some that that's the approach some people use. You know, it's just like I'm just gonna play on the attention aspect. But I feel like if you're gonna do that, you have to have something that you're gonna push. So it'd be weird to just do random stuff just yeah. for yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, well, at the end of the day, man, I hope Keith Murray get the help that he needs because if he needs help, if he needs help, you're right. I ain't gonna, you know, like I ain't said, gonna put something on him that I don't know he about. Could have really caught him just in the bad moment where he was wilding and and or being silly and like like I said. Addiction if, looks different to everybody. Like I said, because he he just performed, but there's look fine. There, there are functioning addicts who can get on stage yep. and be you know and hit every step and l- remember every that wasn't lyric. Normal. 
you know that, that was not normal. That video was not normal. Not, I, I yeah. agree. That's yeah. not normal. Yeah. So yeah. But once again, we don't even know when it's from. True. True. Shout out to Keith Murray, man. All right, man, let's talk, <laughs> let's go back to the BT Awards. Let's talk Buster. Shout out to Buster first of all for getting a lifetime achievement award. I think it's well deserved. Mm-hmm. OG legend. And still puts out top not, extinction level event too. Thank you. Was excellent. Thank you. So let's just go ahead. If you did not visit that album when it came out, I guess it's now a couple of years ago. Um, he he said something though. He was great record. He said something on his acceptance speech in a little press. He said he pioneered the feature as he was coming up and post leaders of the new school. And I used to go to the studio and just kind of be around, fake be around, and ended up writing verses and, and jumping on stuff because it was so dope. But I sat back and thought about it as it relates to hip hop features. He might have a point for artists that really jump on records and just destroy them every single time as a feature. I mean, what other names are we, or do we have out there that would go against what he said? Because I think he has a valid point in terms of pioneering the feature. When you think about people and jumping Ludacris on records. Had a, he had a time where he he kind of championed that feature. <laughs> I don't uh, know if it's like Buster. Drake, of course. Andre, uh, of course. But that's Andre. Three stacks. Yeah. yeah but, I, but if we're talking about pioneering it. Pioneering it, yeah. Pi- that, that's, the, that's the word. Pioneering the feature. Those were his words. We can make a real argument for that because. I think so. After Leaders of the New School broke up. Okay. You know, Buster talks about it was hard for him to try to write yep. an entire album. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there were a lot of songs that like maybe a lot of people don't even remember, didn't even hear. Buster would be like, okay, $1,500 to do this with the artifacts. Okay, let's go. Let's go. You know, $3,000 because I had, he's like, I had to pay bills. Got to feed my son. You know, and so because he was a member of a group. That was how Leaders of New School was set up for him. Yeah. He was always a star though. He was, he was always a star. Facts. But you know what? If you talk to people at that time, at one point they're like, well, you know, maybe Charlie Brown's going to be the guy. Mm, I I'd, have been, I'd have been like, nah. <laughs> I mean, as little, I, I know, always thought Buster Rhymes had a, had a more of a spark than, than Charlie Brown. I, you know, I can see where you would say that. And you know, I mean, but shout out to Dinko D. Shout out well. to Dinko. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, we're probably missing somebody, but that's that is what it is. Um, but here it is, like for you to say, you know, for you to think, okay, I'm in a group, then they're like, okay, now you're a solo act because the group is no more. Right. And it's like, okay, I only got a 16 for him here and there. There are plenty there. Like we know all the stuff after, you know, we know flavor in your ear. We yeah. know, look at me now with Chris Brown. We know, you know, this when he would jump on, you know, Lil John remixes, we know yeah. all that stuff, you know, but there is, there was a period between the leaders of the new school and his first album, the end of the leaders of the new school and his first album as a solo artist in 1996, where he was jumping on a lot of stuff that we don't even remember. So when he talks about pioneering the the, the feature, you know, of course we think about like, uh, of course, scenario, yep. scenario remix, but also it's because if you listen to rap before a certain period, if you bought so and so's album, you got so and so, and that's it. Right. A feature, somebody uh, like you know, when when Big Daddy Kane and Ice Cube got on uh, Public Enemy's Burn Hollywood Burn, Burn, that was a big deal. Because you didn't get people who jumped on, you know, listen, listen to almost any hip hop album before, say, like 1990. Like you didn't get features from anybody, even if it was somebody in your crew. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when he talks about, I, I, he, you know, if you he really, pioneered the consistent feature, yeah, because Run you, DMC kind of pioneered the feature. So to speak, when? in hip hop you, with Aerosmith, that was a one off. Uh, that was exactly. I, I call that a that one off. That was a one off. It was a feature, but, it's a but feature. it was a big deal because it was a feature. Because exactly. if you listen, it you hadn't know, been done. Yeah, because if you listen to all of Run DMC's their first four or five albums, it's, it's Run DMC and that's it. Basically, they had one feature for that first five album run. Mm-hmm. You didn't hear any LL Cool J. You got an LL Cool J album. It right. Wasn't, right. It wasn't even an R like an R and B feature was 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 something that was kind of unheard of at the time. So. You know, if you really do your Googles and look up Busta Rhymes, like I, I sometimes people are like, well, his crew that, doing too much. That whole crew, what Native Tongue, Native Tongue, they all kind of they would do did that yeah. back and forth. So yeah, you had Q-Tip would wind up on a De La Soul, record. exactly. Queen Latifah and and Moni. Moni Love doing stuff together. The posse cut was still new. Yes, Jungle yes. Brothers, a, a posse, yeah, because you know when you think about what the the symphony. That was a big deal. Yeah, with Marley Marl. And, then you, yeah. buddy, like think about when you think about posse cuts. Those are those are coming. Those are the some of the first. Because you know. tribe tribe had tribe got Buster features that are fire. 
Of course. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's around that time. Like, he, he was popping. He was really popping out. He, the story was dope. Even if they just t- sampled his voice, like on Oh My God, on, on, on Lewin Theory. What's the joint on Midnight Marauders? I'm Everybody. sorry. God, lives, yeah, God, lives, through, God lives through. God lives through. God lives through. And, yeah. and oh my God, is on on uh, Midnight Marauders. Yeah, that was a like on my come on, man. Like and the fact that he said he used to say, "I forgot my rhyme book in here last night," but he was steady calling the studio to see who was in the studio. This is brilliant how he got to all those features. Mm-hmm. Like just calling the person, being like, "Yo, who's working tonight?" And then acting like he was working in there the night before, mm-hmm. and it ended up being you know passing the weed around and writing the sixteen. I think that's dope. And he was like, "I fed my family that way." Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I respect the hustle. But I think he's right, man, because he's he's definitely one of the first ones to consistently murder stuff that yeah, he was I a guest on. He I set the blueprint that. for Lil Wayne. Wayne, t- Wayne took it. Man, did Wayne take it, though? No, Wayne Wayne is kind of a different beast when it comes to that. To the features? Yeah, I think he, it's a little different when it comes comes to Wayne. And I ain't taking nothing away from Buster. Wayne, Wayne, it was a point where Wayne would hop on anything. Anything. What you, what you got, Long? Nothing. Uh, no, I don't it sounds like you was about to say something. That's why I asked. No, I don't really have anything. I agree with the Wayne part. I don't know if I agree with the Buster or not. I think it makes sense. It makes sense. But I also like Terry's point. You know about like who really pioneered the feature? Like who who really showed people that you know you can that this is okay this to is do okay to do you know Cause because of how music kind of was. Mm-hmm. But as far as like early Buster, it it makes sense in my mind. But yeah. You know, I don't know if I'm forgetting somebody, but but I think the Wayne's era was just a different era because featuring was wasn't such a big deal. Uh, yeah, it was like it was a thing. Like, it was a thing. Everybody yeah. was doing it at that Agreed. point. You know what I mean? Agreed. So uh, I feel like Andres is maybe even. I, I like Andres because he's so select with it. You know, mm. Andre was good at doing records where I wouldn't see it coming, coming, but I got excited. Like it's like the, walk it out, like walk it out, or the joint with uh Badu. Or, um, or throw some D's on it. Or throw yeah. some D's on it. Green Light with uh, John Legend. Yeah. Like, I didn't see those. I wouldn't. Green Light made more sense to me. Than Walk It Out. Than Walk It Out and throw some D's on it. Because John Legend was an established artist at that time. I these guess the guys, bo- these were their first songs. They were. They and were. Dre heard them was like, I'm going a, I'm to a go ahead and drop a gem on these. Shoot, it was their I, last song. Yeah, I mean, first and last. I mean, <laughs> Andre was kind of dissing them on their own song. Or dissing the whole fan base on Walk It Out. Yeah, it was. If you go back and listen, yeah. yeah kind of. Yeah. Talking yeah. about classic cars and, and take that thing two sizes down. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. You out here walking around and something look like a nightgown. <laughs> Man, I was so disappointed hearing Killer Mike backtrack oh. about... <laughs> The, the possibility of Dre's nah, quote man. unquote album. Did y'all see that? the world. Yeah, man, yeah. he had me though. He had he me. Throw the world. Oh, he backtracked it? Yeah. He backtracked. He was like, man, what did he say? He was, I, was a, drunk. I was drunk or something like that. But he had me going when he was like, man, I heard X amount of records. We flying mm-hmm. out next month to hear it and listen to it. The whole thing I'm was, gone. even if it's true, he probably wasn't supposed to say anything. He wasn't supposed yeah. to say it. Yeah. That's, that's the so, whole point. You give it a guy who's already got anxiety about releasing music. Anxiety about releasing music. Yeah, because now you set an expectation. <laughs> now now there's an expectation, which so, he really, literally talked about in his interview with yeah. Rick Rubin. We so now, just, now we, we're about to have a Dr. Dre situation. <laughs> we'll, we'll never hear the chronic. He said, bro. It, Dang it, we, Mike. It goes back to what we just talked about. Ruin it for everyone. About <laughs> We just praised you. Just, <laughs> amp, <laughs> just amping up a situation. He didn't have to do that if that was the case. Because I sure, I fell for oh, it. It's a slip up. I, I fell happens, for I it. He was feeling good out there at all. Yeah. Off the, off the all, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll put out a really good project. Mike, the record's yeah. still fire though. I'm yeah, just saying really though, good, you ain't man. have to send us off with the it's really good. with the Dre Dre. Joint. And he is going on tour. Um, some of them are festival acts. He's not coming to our city, unfortunately. The oh, closest man. place that we can reach him at will be Chicago. Chicago. That's usually what it is. Pitchfork. Yep. He's yeah. going. He say he's taking a choir with him. Yeah. Uh, I want to see old girl. Track sing stars live. going with him. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I saw a video for uh, I, it had been out about a month or so, which I didn't realize. But the joint about his mom, there's a video for it that is beautiful. Mm. Motherless, yeah. There's yeah, a yeah. there's a there's a video that goes with it mm. that is incredible, man. Yeah. So I added that to turn off your radio about a month ago. Yeah, I was asleep. I was asleep. But shout out to him on that video. But yeah, man, he sent me off because I got hyped. Somebody actually asked in our comments, "How do you get on that turn off your radio playlist?" And the answer is, I don't know. I do it, and I don't know. 
man. Well, he's yeah. the man, so then you can't get high, drop you can't good. get higher than him. <laughs> drop something good and hope that I see it. Because I, I have no submission <laughs> system anymore. I don't. I don't do any of that right now. I just don't have time for it. So I hope I see it. Sorry. <laughs> what they say if it's fire, if it's dope, you'll find it. Yeah, I mean to be honest, turn off your radio and the playlisting has just been something I do in my spare time ever since we kind of stopped. It's just kind of like. I see something on YouTube. Cool. And to get added to the playlist, it's literally just hit the like button, add it to the playlist. That's all I do. So it's not mm-hmm. even like a major like, all right, let me sit down. Yeah, and, you know, a lot of you got some now. good you got some good stuff on there. There's some records that oh, I know that <laughs> that I uh have He's saved. Like, oh, um and you know, there's just enough for me to hear how dope it is. I'm like, yeah, I got to go back to that yeah. one. I, I've written down, well, I've saved multiple yeah. joints off those. So kudos to you, man, because it's some artists I didn't even know about. Yeah, I, thanks. But I know. <laughs> <laughs> I have a gift. Thanks to our partners. Dr. Coleman of Coleman Dental is our go-to dentist. He's a longtime Indianapolis arts and music supporter located right in Broad Ripple. Printfinity is a screen printing shop based in Indianapolis, owned and operated by our own DJ J. Diff. Our good friends at Indie CD and Vinyl operate one of the best record stores in North America. Shop new and used in their site or visit them in person. And the best way to support the new old heads is to visit our Patreon and become a member for as little as three bucks a month. All details on newoldheads.com. All right, we are back. Shout out to our partners as always. <laughs> Jay Moore is giggling with Lone about something on the phone that I can't see. And I'm it's funny. Man, I can't see it, but I'm gonna take your word for yeah. it. But uh shout out to the partners as all as always. We appreciate those relationships and uh hope to continue to grow those. Shout out to the chat as well. All right, man. Um so apparently uh some of y'all uh have pissed off Kit Kit Capri as it relates to the brother Eminem. We've talked about a lot on this show. Mm-hmm. He says, I'm about to give Kiki Capri this work. Hey, I, I knew you was going to say that. So he was on a uh, podcast. I think it's called Hip, the Hip Hop Made Podcast. But the main headline says, you're mad because he's doing black stuff better than you are. Mm-hmm. And this is as it relates Who's to Who's mad? Just Eminem haters. He's addressing people that hate Eminem for no reason. He said, everybody goes, and I'm going to read the quote from Capri. He said, Everybody goes by the popularity of the person instead of the real skill set. Everybody keep going at Eminem because he's white. You're mad because he's doing black stuff better than you are. That's what it is. The boy is nice. You can't take that from him. Wisely use his name in your mouth every time. That boy is nice. You can't F with him on the stage at all. So Kid Capri ain't having it. You know, we, we've had our share of Eminem jokes and we've talked about what his music does, how it performs and how it doesn't. We've never said that he's not nice. But Kid Capri is not going, Jay Moore. Based off the comments that he just said to that, you say what? I'll say, Kid Capri, go ahead and rock a party. And you just play Eminem for a whole hour and see how the crowd reacts. Try 10 minutes or 20 minutes. (laughs) Can you do 20 minutes? You know, and I'm Uh, I'm saying. 20 minutes. I'm serious. I'm saying off his albums. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and say, play your favorite songs off of uh, Relapse, Kid Capri. For 20 minutes. Play, yeah, just go ahead and just run joints from relapse and encore and recovery and see how the room actually look. Yes, we have said many times Eminem is an omega level like wordsmith. Facts, you know what I'm saying? Facts. But at the same as far as making songs and making slaps, I'm sorry. They're, that's what the components is missing. There are whole Eminem records that I will never listen to ever again. Man, that's tough. You know what I'm saying? I, and I can't. I can't think of an Eminem record that I've when I've said uh, fr- what was the second one the Eminem show uh, no, Marshall, Mathers. Marshall, Mathers. Marshall Mathers LP I remember really enjoying that album and that's really where that was good it was that's, a good album that album was dope that's really where it stops kind of as far as me enjoying an entire Eminem album you know like there's nothing like when I think about great first of all we talk about him doing black stuff better than but that's when people get they start to bring that sales argument in yep and okay. I don't care nothing about them sales or the technicality at you aspect. know, because which he thrives in both. That's great. That is great. But you know what? Like when I talk about as somebody who's in the mainstream and the underground hip hop clubs, like don't nobody play them Eminem <clears throat> songs. They might play a song where he's got a feature and he snaps. But I, I, I mean, calm down, Kid Capri. I, you, we love you. You are a uh, you are a, a, a part of hip hop that is cannot be denied. But when you say these things, I, 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 I kind of get where you're coming from. But once again, I challenge you. 
his, as somebody who is a nobody and you are Kid Capri to go to one of your sets and be like, I'm going to play Eminem yeah. songs off of his albums I can for attest, an hour. I can attest that um, Kid Capri is here every year for either Black Expo or the Circle City Classic DJ and an all white party or some kind of variation of such. He can't even play Eminem at an all white party. He does not play I Eminem at none yeah, of these. Bar. That's what I was trying to say. He stole my bar from me. And then he, he gave, he gave him the bar. <laughs> that's a bar right there. That's, right, that's how it goes. I like that. But anyway, one. he's not playing that in none of these parties. So how how does he go on to say, this is the thing about music too. Although the hip hop culture is black, essentially, mm -hmm. there's more people involved in it now. So it's not, it, it evolved from being only black to being something where there's a lot of uh, cultures and other cultures involved in the culture as well. It's much more diverse. But you can't say that um, you don't like Eminem because he's doing black stuff better than you. That just doesn't make sense. Where at one point in time, most of his fan base didn't even like hip hop. They only liked it because it was a white dude that was rapping and he raps very well. Never said he, he doesn't rap very well and he's not, he's, in my personal opinion, if I want to be square, if I want to be frank, he's top 10 artists of all time. It's just not somebody that I prefer to listen to. What if I told you, Terry, I'm stay, stay here. What if I told you that his comments are still more focused on the skill set versus totality? Because he starts off talking about... What does about, that mean, though? When we say totality, I'm talking about... We, we mentioned skills, sales, How, how, white, does, how does skill set make you black? What he, I think what he's, I think what he's trying to focus on on the first line is how nice he is. He keeps going back talking about that boy. He's nice. nice. He's nice. How nice he is. His real skill set versus this and versus popularity. So I think the the majority of it is about how nice he is versus. Now he, he missed me with the black. The he missed me with that. But, but I think that's, that's the entire argument, though. Yeah, that's that's what. But I, but I feel like there's more in here outside of that where he's kind of mentioning how nice he is and just recognizing how nice he is. But to your point, that's the headline. The black part is, that's the line. I mean, we can all acknowledge it, and we have, a, I feel like, a bazillion times. We can acknowledge it, like Jay just said, like Terry just said. Right. Eminem can rap really well. Yeah. From a technical he nice. standpoint, he can do it. He nice. Does anybody here sitting at this table enjoy just generally listening to Eminem in our regular playlist? No. I haven't since the same thing you said, the Marshall Mathers LP or the None second of album. None songs pop up in my yearly wrap up that whatever listening device or whatever streaming device I use at the end of the year, none of his songs pop up. And he does have good features from time he does. to time. He does. But as far as like, you know, can he rap to that aspect of what his argument is? Yes. Mm -hmm. But nobody has ever said that he can't. Nobody has ever said that. That's never the argument. So why are we yeah, still it, doing it? It has nothing to do with being black. That's like essentially saying if you if you have like a, a Michael Jackson and Prince debate, certain people can't listen to him because they can't understand it because they're they're black and he's not and they're not you know what I'm saying? It's it's one of those type things to me, essentially. So I just don't reach. I just don't I don't, I don't get that. It's just Look, if he knows how to rap, yeah. he knows how to rap. Simple as that. But his fan base, until he start calling out these pretty much bigots, were people that don't rock with hip hop. True. And aren't black. So I can't, I can't G for somebody calling somebody or saying his style is more black than black people. Essentially, right? It doesn't it's, make it's, any it's, sense. It's silly. It's super silly. You know, and I look. It's just like when I think of does Eminem have a PSA? Like Jay Z's got PSA, which is guaranteed to tear the roof off of any uh, venue if played at the right time. And mm -hmm. DJ really knows what they're doing. Does he have even a, a Nas has made you look? You know, does he have one of those songs where, like, if I would you say put it lose on, yourself. probably, but I don't think he. Lose I, don't, yourself. I don't think he does for like a hip hop crowd. Nah, not even lose yourself. Like, we lose yourself. Have. You got to be in a mood, like for real, to hear lose yourself. We don't need. We can get away with not playing lose yourself at coaches for you. Don't have year. to. You yeah. don't have to be to your point. I've never heard lose yourself at coaches. <laughs> no, you haven't. Way. You probably won't either. Yeah. To your point, though, you don't have to be in a mood. Go crazy when PSA come on. To y'all point, nah. So I'm, I'm, I understand that. I, I get nah. it. Eminem does not make jams. Does not make jams. That's that, that's all we've ever jams. said. He doesn't he make can jams. Rap and, he's an he's an incredible words incredible MC. He can put together words like no other. He can make emotional related songs. Yeah, yeah make you know. jams. There's no and jams. Like, and like you know, and the thing is, I've heard. Yeah, and that's the crazy thing. He has the potential to make jams. He just doesn't do it. Yeah. I mean, he got a lot to. I mean. Or he just we, hasn't done it. 
we know his we know his catalog like which is what you kind of the the area you're going into long like there's substance depth like he touches on a lot of stuff personal stuff yep. like storytelling all that type of stuff i appreciate that stan that's a dope record you got some cuts you got some great features yeah he we, does. we were just having a feature so stan, once again right. off of the eminem show yep. record is or amazing off of yeah or some that record is LP. that record is amazing but you hit it on the head with the, the dj set and that <laughs> there's no way you can do it you said he said 10 minutes you're right I, I mean, just, ten, I just, ten minutes. Ten might, minutes. You might be able to figure out with features probably, and stuff he's yeah, doing, yeah, Doctor yeah. Dre. Features though, but like we, his records. I remember there was a song, and this, this goes to how metrics and sometimes metrics don't ever always make sense. I remember there was a song, yeah, called "Crack a Bottle." I think it was off of Relapse, and the sound somehow that song made it to number one on Billboard. Mm -hmm. Don't nobody like that song. I somebody liked it, it heard it since the one. year it came out. Yeah, Did more. Somebody liked it if it went to number one. Now, some no, it speaks some, to the demographic that it, we're buying. And it, that demographic it speaks like to the it. machine that was Interscope at that time. It's right. a machine. It's yeah. a machine. It's not the he doesn't make jams. He does not make jams for hip hop. People that generally enjoy hip hop. He I mean, doesn't. I, I think that's I, my. That's really my only argument. He doesn't make stuff that I enjoy listening to that I just want to put on. And I mean, I to. think that's actually a accurate way to assess it. But it's also not hating. When he hating, was hopping just, on them fifty joints, he was sounding good. True. Yeah. Oh Des yeah, destroyed he was, Renegade. Yeah, he was smoking those, destroyed Renegade. Yeah, yeah. So, the the, matter of fact, good. the first song on Fifty Cent's <laughs> album, <laughs> patiently waiting. He patiently smoked waiting. That. He smoked. went off on smoked. that song. Every the dead. We're talking minutes. about features. Yeah. Snapped. He it he is. goes Once off again, on every you're feature. About he's three on. minutes, so you need a whole fifty-seven more. That Drake song where everybody's on there when Eminem oh. comes on at the end. He had mm -hmm. the best verse on that. Man, he murdered that song. Facts. Facts. So so this is not a a statement or. Or a sentiment that he can't rap and he can't hold his own and he can't do stuff better than a lot of MCs, but it has nothing to do being with being blacker than somebody that's black. And Eminem feature is always going to be something that we got to check for. Right. Have you guys noticed that Eminem, you rarely find an Eminem acapella because he mixes every feature that he's on. He has to mix it. I heard that the other day in the interview. Uh, I, I think I it really was just Blaze. Just, it might have been just Blaze that said... He has to mix all of his features. He won't let anybody else touch it. So that's why you can't find a lot of his just stuff from him floating around because everything goes through him. Maybe he should. I think, I think Eminem would do good to take a killer mic approach. Okay. And have, I mean, I know No ID came in after the fact, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but they, he said, uh, Killer Mike said they had like 40 songs or something yeah. and then they still made some more. But I, even though Eminem makes his own beats, I don't personally like them at all. Um, you can definitely tell him any of You can't. Oh, yeah. That plotting like, kind of. Do, it's just. Do, do, do. Uh, it's just not. It's everything's. I dark. mean, Renegade was dope. And maybe that's maybe that's part of his issue that I have with him is that he doesn't have jams because his beats are just not good typically unless he's on a feature with somebody else's beat. Um, but generally speaking, I think that he would do well to work. And people are going to say, "Oh, he worked with Dr. Dre." Yeah, he was good when he worked with Dr. Dre. <laughs> True. Um, but I think if he sat down. Can you imagine an Eminem in a Primo project? Could you, oh could you imagine God. Eminem in like a Pete Rock or Eminem in a Pharrell would be weird. I would not yeah, want to hear that. I don't, want to, I don't need um, that one, but the first two I'll You know what I mean? Like, or Hit Boy like or something. Hit Boy, you know. you know, I don't know anybody, but But yeah. like something like that to where like, you know, he's pulled out of his world a little bit and he's forced to make something that, you know, again, jams. Yeah. I think I, I would enjoy it. I do think, I do think there is a... There's a chamber that he hasn't tapped into, to your point, from especially from a production standpoint. You don't have to be a, a person that's a super creative or super artist or whatever to hear an Eminem beat and just know what the vibe is going to be. You can pick that up just being a casual fan. I don't like Renegade because the beat sucks. Renegade. I actually, I think I, like I hate that part with that. The <laughs> I, don't like I, think the, I think the chorus is terrible. I like Man, it. I don't he, like it. Boy, he destroyed that song though. He did. It was so cold that it made me be like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna just tolerate the beat because he imagine bodied the, this record. Imagine if the beat was good. Well, we can't find acapellas <laughs> nowadays. I in the days of one. AI, I got uh, this. Yeah, put yeah. it in uh, Serato. Serato, you can figure it oh, out. I forgot they do got that technology. Yeah, now. Come on, so, man. Dude. And the thing is, Black it's man. not. It's not that the beat is like. I know I just said it's <clears throat> horrible and I don't like it. It's because I don't. But it's not that from a general standpoint that the beat is absolutely horrible. Not trash. No, it's not trash. 
but in, in reference to everything else that was on that project, it didn't. It stood out as not fitting to me. And again, I just I don't like that. his production style, and I feel I like know, if, I think it did kind of fit because I don't think so. The album was called Blueprint, so essentially it was a blueprint of putting good stuff together. Yeah, but the blueprint was soulful, man. Like that, that, I, I, that, I don't, did, that was stuck out. That beat, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was stuck out. It didn't sound like any of the other beats. Yeah, I, I, I didn't mean. feel like Hola Ho Vito from no, Timberland. Those, those are the two. Those are the two that didn't really fit. And those weren't from those weren't in house because the in house producers on there were Kanye and Just Blaze, Blaze. and Bink. Bink. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. those were. I agree. That I agree was with Timberland that. and and Eminem. I like and actually, I like Timberland's. I like actually, Timberland's Renegade beat. was an Eminem song first that featured yeah, Royce Five Nine. Nine. Yeah. Oh, really? And Jay just wanted to hop on it, so they flipped it. And it actually, oh, sa- and nice. it actually sounds like that, mm. especially when when you hear what he what, what Terry just said. It sounds like Eminem record. Yeah, no, it does. It you does. know what I'm saying? But either way, we not hate on Eminem. No, nah, uh, we ain't. But the part about the Eminem the is dope. Let's is, uh, let's get that out there. Yeah, He's yeah. dope, but we, we, he yeah. just doesn't make music that. I want to ride around too and 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 vibe like that. He just doesn't. This is not me. And I'm sorry, Kid Capri. You wrong. You just wrong. <laughs> you gonna call out the OG like that, man? Look, man. You're just mad OG. because he's doing black stuff better than you are. I think that's yeah, just I mean, stupid. I'm sorry, you don't say stuff like that out loud. That's Capri. stupid. What you say, Lone? That's what Jay Moore's mad about. Stuff better than you. Man. That was the Italian side of Kid Capri that said yeah. that. <laughs> wow. Well played. Well played, Mike. <laughs> Very well. All right. Well, it's all we got to do right now. <laughs> pip, pip, cheerio. I feel like this character is going to resurface and hold some more episodes. I think that's All right. I don't know what that was. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I don't know what he just said. That was yeah. slurish. That was yeah. I just want to die like this right here. <laughs> <laughs> I want a pug out so I can put dents in it. All right, man. So, look. Um, Long, Long, did you see the... Uh, you see our suggestions, man. I'm going to have you go through them and uh, want me to pick something. Pick what you think. And I got one queued up. I only picked one because I only liked one of them. And we've already talked about <laughs> it. <laughs> I love your friends when they tell the truth. Let's see. Talib Kweli, fear of. Oh, he went off with somebody because he they always go. Because uh, fans were mad that they had to get a four ninety nine subscription to that website um, to stream the album right. just for them to pull the album down. So they were chopping him up. Online because people now went, it's on Bandcamp. And exactly, people went through all that to get subscriptions, and he was defending himself, saying, "Go follow Kanye." Something it was bleeped out. I couldn't even say what he said. Like he brought Kanye up, and he was just going back and forth. Don't ever bring Kanye up if you're trying to defend yourself, bro. He was going back and forth with people that were calling him out for having them subscribe as fans, and he actually was one of one of the comments. See, this is the problem when you become too much of a fanboy. Who you talking about? I'm the not person? Not you. me. I'm talking about the. The people that were mad? Yeah. Okay. You become too much of a fanboy. You pay for a, a subscription mm-hmm. for this for you to listen to the album. But by this time, you should have, have, have listened to it, right? And now that it's off of that streaming service, it's now on Bandcamp. Bandcamp is a free service. Well, it's, so it doesn't matter, right? In my personal opinion. He said, nobody said you were obligated to support me. In fact, I said the exact opposite. I said, please don't support me because I don't want That's you to support That's why none me. of us have listened to that album yet. Yeah. You should go support the Nazis, loving Ye instead, since you think he's right. Yep. That's what I wrote. Yeah, calm down, B. You know he's mad at Kanye anyway. So who are you what lying Kanye for? Said about him. Don't support me. Didn't you say you were <laughs> you say we're leaving because you had you had better albums to listen to? So leave. Bye. You lie a lot. This is after somebody cooked him about the four ninety nine subscription. And so the person said you sound crazy and like a simple-minded stand slave following the narrative that they want you to believe to benefit solely themselves. What? This Black person paid for to hear he that He definitely album. paid. Black yeah. Star and Quali asked us to pay for a subscription at Luminary to be able to stream their album and they removed it, but we are obligated to support them. Bruh, please unplug yourself and see past to your stardom. Stand them. None of Stand this makes them. any sense. Yeah. Nah, that, that yeah. argument doesn't even make sense because if you paid for that, find fault with, with yourself for paying for that streaming service that nobody else is using. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's going. Yeah. It's, <laughs> and then there's a big, long, you see multiple <laughs> paragraph thing. I mean, it's like four paragraphs. It's quality esque. And it starts off I'm not your slave, white man. <laughs> Uh, so really, that I don't sound like our comment section. <laughs> <laughs> so really, I don't owe you an explanation for any anything. He, he explained a whole lot. I yep. don't get it. And Cal- then, he, then he continues. Calm yourself. 
<laughs> what Luminary paid me is none of your business. They paid us fairly for three months by letting y'all hear it. Not owning it, hearing it on their platform, we kept up without taking it down for seven additional months without striking new deals because we are kind-hearted they and hurt gracious. They hurt themselves by using Man, Luminary. Man, can you imagine? The, all, the, all the people that didn't listen to this project... That would have listened to, to the it, project. They would have made the money up. Yes. Yeah. They hurt themselves by using that. Hey, Lone, I feel like we in a, me and you in a, a book club now. <laughs> now, a year later, we have made this album available for sale on another platform because we effing felt like it. So if you want to buy it, buy it. If you don't, don't. We well, say if you don't, don't F. Why are you crying about it? Yeah, why are you crying and about it? I don't it? care. Do you go to Spotify to stream an album and then demand that the artist give you the album for free somewhere else? No, you didn't. You don't do that to anyone but Black Star. We don't make this music for you. Wow. <laughs> he don't have any type of. We PR. make it for our own mental health, obviously. And most definitely ain't gonna say nothing. He ain't gonna say a word anything. about this. Is he gonna pay that child support? Bro, at the end of the day, we we said from the beginning. That this was not the not the vibe. I mentioned on the show that we talked about. I said just put it up on Bandcamp, tag a price on it, let the people get it, and let's just rock out. I'd have went on there and bought it. I, you know, I can, I can. Okay, to to <clears throat> only for Quali's defense. Okay, just a little bit. All right, I can appreciate the fact that they tried to make a deal for themselves that was better than what the streaming platforms yes. face because we all know that they don't pay anything and it's just getting worse. Realistically, okay. I can appreciate that, but at the same time, you this is the backlash that you get from that, where you have a whole bunch of fans that have adapted a way of listening to stuff that have never listened to your project. It's right. just what it is. And so, yes, people are going to lash out. People are going to be upset. And then when you do something like this, like bring it back to a platform months later when they thought that the only way that they were going to be able to get it was through luminary yes you're going to piss people off and it pissed people off you have to eat that as you an artist eat that. you have, you have to. to eat that like you can't be in here crying back and forth and arguing with somebody who has a legitimate argument for that that's a fan like i just don't i don't know it just it yeah, seems misguided with your fans you know it seems misguided to me and so like i can appreciate some of it and yes they can do whatever they want with their project but like grow up and clearly a bigger fan than me or basically anybody at this table because no, we still haven't listened to the album look, still bro, have i've, still I've, haven't I've said to many it. times on this show that black star was the reason that Thanks. i became a fan of hip-hop i listened to it before but i became a fan because of black star You've always said that and That's i true. and i i did not go to reach this out and I'm a hip hop connoisseur of doing this stuff. I just, I was not interested in signing up for this. It didn't interest me enough to want to do that. You have a lot of people like that. Mm. It's just what it is. And so, yeah. yes, I'm sure a lot of people did sign up and I'm sure they made their money and that's great. But this type of back and forth is just too much. Yeah. Well, how does he have the energy to do this? I don't know. He's it, known for doing good this for though. you. Like he's to been worry this that person. much. If if we were like that and we're we're battling back and forth with everybody in the comment section, mm -hmm. I just I don't have the time or the desire. This is I mean these are multiple paragraphs. Uh -uh. Like these are yeah he's paragraphs. going like he's actually yeah, he, this isn't like hey he's, long as, he's, long as looking he's at the a little screenshot about it yeah you could tell he's really bothered like this yeah, bothered him that that, old, that buddy came at him like that he's definitely bothered but these pair like going back and forth like this with the people that have you know helped you ascend to where you are they kind of whack too honestly yeah, Ooh, the, the, yeah the i think fan? it's both you I think, think it goes both ways i think yes, it's absolutely. both i think it's like like to be this upset because they're re-releasing it on Bandcamp, like yeah, that's come right. on like it, it you just know, thought it was a secret society that that man. you had to pay admission and and <laughs> nobody could ever hear it unless nah come on that's that's lame man. is there so. loan is there a way or is there a standard or a president I should say as it relates to how you should respond to your fans Obama Obama oh you said is there a president I'm sorry uh, <laughs> president I said president I didn't say president I didn't say president, say yeah, president. Yeah, you did say uh, president. here no, you go uh, you knew you was about you to co-sign and actually I, I was going to correct you but <laughs> why I, you ain't correct I, me I let you slide why would you not correct me because I did yeah, yeah he did you. so it's all no good. you actually was clowning me that's what he was yeah. that's still spoke, thank you thank you spoke I feel better go ahead man no I don't know if there's thank you Quali can respond however Quali wants to respond true it's just that this is what you're going to get is you're going to get us who don't care about this at all that True. are talking about it. You know, it's like, why are we talking about this? You know, I, 
I, you know, to, you go listen to, to our, album? we talking about because we're we're talking heads and we're on a podcast. Right, right, we're yeah, talking right. about it, but but outside of that, like if I was just a fan, I would just be like, bro, just put the music out. I don't, I don't know, like put it. You just yeah, be like, I'm sorry. Where's apologize the, or something? I don't know. Where's I don't, the I just link? Don't care yeah, what do you much. want me to do? Yeah, I don't care that much. So I because if you really liked it and you had that access to it, you paid for right. I'd have my own version of this anyway. Somehow. I would have already figured out how to get it for myself. Exactly. I could have gotten this album if I wanted. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, like anybody can get anything. It's not that hard. No, nah, it's not. So, you know, for four ninety nine, whatever you paid, paid on Luminary, I don't know if it's monthly or one time, but look, you got your exclusivity. You were one of the people that could actually make comments on what this album sounded like because, of course, we didn't listen. So. I didn't hear anybody say it was like, Super great, it was like that. No, I, I heard no, it. I? I heard actually, I've heard the opposite. I yeah. heard it wasn't all that spectacular. Oh, you did? Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. I have. This is from anybody. fans, but again, I don't have an opinion on this because I didn't listen. So I haven't. Uh, I haven't heard anybody. That rave ship about has it. sailed. Yeah. Moments over, bro. Sunk. I mean, it's on Bandcamp now, so maybe I'll listen to it. Maybe. Yeah. If I feel like it. If yeah. I, exactly, if I feel like it. But yeah. Jay Moore, you sound like the wave has passed. It's one of these things where it's like, if it was that great, I, I there would be people within my circle who would say, "Yo, you need exactly. to drop that four ninety nine. Exactly, it would like, have been one of us. Look, just like you know, I saw that the, the Killer Mike said there's going to be some physical media for this album, and I'm going to buy it. Hundred percent. Yeah, I'm going to get a CD or yeah. vinyl. Of Hopefully, it. I can get one signed. Yeah, and, and to to your I agree. to your point uh, about you know how do you conduct yourself with fans this. Right. This not like a, this. As a fan, this puts me off to not even care even more to want to check it out. It's just kind of like, yeah, sure, I'm a fan of Yasin. I'm a fan of Madlib, but I haven't really been a fan of Quali for a long time, and none of this makes me even. It doesn't help, does it? Probably not since Eardrum, honestly. It's been a long time. That's been a long time. Eardrum was. He did drop some records with his kids, uh, some videos that were pretty decent that yeah. I liked. I didn't but, get a chance um, to see those. Eardrum is the last body of work from Quali that I appreciated. And he hasn't helped. His standing with his Twitter, uh, you know, whatever Twitter you want to no call more. it. Well, when he was on there, this, I think the, the one I show was from uh, sometimes, IG. Sometimes it's like you don't want to meet the people that are making the art. Yeah, that's that really is a thing to where like, man, I just do not want. Like, I remember when I got an opportunity to meet Common. Yeah, I was like, do I really want to meet Common? Mm. Like, what if he is a complete jerk? Yeah, and yep. It smells like what if he's like Pete Rock? Liquor. Oh man, I heard Pete Rock's a really nice guy. I met him in New uh, York. It actually was cool. Yeah. Yeah. His online persona is not. Yeah, I got a chance. I, I got a chance to meet him when he came here too for the. No, he just met him. He was, he was quick really enough cool. to sign something, but you know, he signed. Yeah, he did sign up. Uh, Soul Survivor took a picture, but it was the person who was there taking pictures, so I never. He got actually, a picture. he yeah. actually pulled me to the side and gave me some advice, mm. and was actually cool. So like, he seems like in all the interactions. Then he went off on loan the next day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, Shout out uh, to Ice Standard, man. I was at Beast of the Beast, and he uh, he gave me some game. Uh, so that interaction was dope. Now, I don't know what's going on with the internet. Yeah. Damn, but, all right, man. He's still OG, still a, le- still a legend. All right, man. Uh, let's see. Shout out to the chat. They still in here. Appreciate y'all for sticking around with us. Is there anything else I missed or you gentlemen want to say before we uh, get a chance to ride out? I don't know. It's moving <laughs> <laughs> All right. And on that note, this is oh, going to be a retired thing, I think. <laughs> Newoldheads.com for all the education you need this year. If you see it, like it, subscribe, thumbs up, check out our Patreon as well. Do we have a uh, new uh, vinyl? New vinyl to Freddie Gibbs album. Soul sold separately. We're giving that away. If you sign up anytime before the end of July, then you will have a chance uh, to get this as we raffle them off at the end of July. So that's what's up right now. Dope project. So this would be a good one to have on Wax. We appreciate the support as always. Shout out to the chat. We'll see y'all next week. Peace. Yeah, yeah.